Let's set this pig head on fire using one of my favorite nodes so far in SOPS and Houdini 18, which is the pyro source spread. But before we start using that, let's set up our initial simulation attributes using a pyro source first. Let's highlight it, set it to surface scatter again, and dial in the particle separation 0 0.02 in my case. No attributes yet, and we're going to create a group, a point group that is, and let's call it hot. And we're going to use this group to specify the region, the area where the fire on this pig head is going to start. And I want to pick this corner of the ear here. So I'm going to disable the base group and enable keep in bounding regions instead. Bounding box is fine, just going to scale it down to be 0.1 along each axis. Then over the viewport hit space and 2 and select my handles here. I'm going to move this to this ear region, then hit space and 3 over the viewport and move it up. So now I've got these few points here in my hot group. Next I'm going to create an attribute and set it to be 1 on these points that are in the hot group and 0 on the other points. Using the attribute create node, it's going to be a point group called hot and the attribute should be named temperature. It's going to be a float on a point. The default value should be 0. However, the value in the hot group should be 1, like so. Now it's finally time to drop down the lovely pyro source spread. And I went over the functionality of this node in the Houdini 18 SOPS tutorial. So basically this is a bit like an infection solver that spreads an attribute starting from a starting point group over the whole mesh using a few attributes here. So let's set this up. Let's just visualize the burn here. And even after 74 frames, and let's reset this toggle real time toggle and hit play, we can see the spread is kind of limited here. And the first thing to change that is to dial back on the cooling rate so the fire does not cool down as fast. So let's set that to 0 0.4 in our case, hit play again. And it's already looking better. However, this is looking a bit too uniform in my taste. I mean, it gets there in the end, but still it looks a bit uniform. And the parameter driving this look is mainly the diffusion rate noise in here. So let's visualize this, clicking on diffusion, and let's dial this in a bit. Let's set its element size to 0 0.5, make it a bit smaller, and go back to burn again and see how that looks. Yeah, I like this way better. And if you want to get rid of those areas where the flames do not spread, just increase the first value of that remap here. Instead of 0, let's set it to 0 0.05. Yeah, maybe it needs to be tweaked in here, but you get the overall idea. All right, so we've got this burn spreading here over the mesh or over the source points. Next, let's rasterize those points into a volume, which we're then going to pipe into our pyro solver. Again, using the volume rasterize attributes, which we're going to append the voxel size. I want to use the pyro sources particle separation again. So right click in here, copy that parameter, go down to our volume rasterize and right click and paste that as a relative reference here. So we don't have to dial this in on multiple nodes, but only on one. We want to rasterize two attributes here, temperature on the one hand, and then burn. So basically what we sourced here or what we've been sourcing here. So if we have a look at this, our volume is expanding and growing as the fire is spreading on that surface. Finally, let's wire that into a pyro solver. And again, I want to use this pyro sources particle separation here. So copy parameter to drive the pyro solver's voxel size paste as relative reference down here. Let's hit play on that pyro solver. And there's not much to see. There's something happening definitely, but not much to see. And to fix that, I'm going to go to the solving tab here, to the simulation and increase the reference temp. It is basically a multiplier for my temperature attribute, which ranges from zero to one and which is used to turn that zero to one range into meaningful temperature in our fire. And fires usually have temperatures ranging from, well, I don't know, I, I guesstimate 1500 Kelvin to, I don't know what a metal fire can reach, 4000, 5000 Kelvin maybe. In this case, let's just use 2500 Kelvin, which is around 2230 degrees Celsius. And we can see something appear in here. So let's hit play again. And yeah, that already starts to look like something, but these flames are a bit too high. So in the flames tab, let's dial back the flames lifespan from two seconds to 0 0.25 seconds and reset our simulation, which is looking a bit better. Let's just ghost our input geometry here, but still it's a bit high. It's a bit too straight, too geometric, non-organic looking. So let's dial in its shape and let's get rid of the dissipation and instead increase disturbance and shredding and increase this massively. So I want to dial in a disturbance of one and a shredding of 15 in my case. Again, reset this, maybe hit reset simulation for a good measure and resim. And now I'm slowly getting there. Let's just switch my viewport to smooth shaded to get rid of all these outlines. 
And under the Look tab, let's dial in the shading a bit. So let's increase my intensity here. So the fire is a bit stronger. And let's reset this. And also in the simulation, let's adjust the buoyancy a bit to 0.3. So the flame doesn't rise as high as quickly. All right, so far, one neat trick that I didn't come up with is in order to give this flame a bit more realism is add a blue edge here where the flame is starting. So let's do that by going up one level, dropping down another geo, call this one blue flame, dive in there, use an OBJ merge, and let's merge the output of our solver. So back on our test geo here, let's maybe attach a null to this pyro solver, which we're gonna call out underscore flame. And in the blue flame, let's OBJ merge exactly the snow, the out flame. And then to configure the shader, attach a pyro post process, which is a new node as well. Let's skip to a frame that's further down the simulation, maybe frame 60. And let's set this up to generate a blue flame that's only on the edges here. So I don't care for the density in this case. I could leave it at that or scale it back to zero, but I'm caring much for the flame intensity. So let's scale that up to say 50 really bright now. And also I'm only caring for these areas here. So I want the flame intensity to go up in these low areas really quickly. So I'm just gonna grab this part here and drag it up there. Finally, I don't want this to be a physically plausible black body, but I want this to behave like a ramp. And I want to dial in two things here. Again, where this flame is cold, it should be blue. So let's pick a blue color here, maybe something along the lines of this and have it fade really quickly. So I'm gonna drag this handle up front, double click on it and set it to black so it fades quickly. And I'm ending up with this cool edge here. Okay, let's go up one level and finally maybe merge in that pig head. So again, into my test geo here, let's add another null here or let's rename this one out underscore pig head, go up one level and again, drop a geo node, call this one pig head, dive in there and OBJ merge that null we just renamed called out pig head. So now we end up with these three pieces, the blue flame part, the main flame, and the pig head. The neat thing about these shaders is that Mantra can directly render them. So let's drop down, say, a quick HDR using an environment light, just control click on this. Also drop down a camera, control clicking on the camera. I wanna lock that to my viewport so it follows where I'm looking. And in my environment light, I'll just select an HDR. Let's maybe dial back its intensity to say 0.1 and head over to the render view and let's just render this. And you can see the basic shading is there, transporting over from what we've seen in the viewport and set up using those new pyro sub tools. And to me, the really interesting part of this new pyro workflow is, on the one hand, this pyro source spread, which is basically an infection solver, which you can use and abuse for many effects. And on the other hand, is what can happen inside this pyro solver here using a few gas wrangles and a few merges. So you're able to art direct your simulation using vector volumes, different forces, or whatever you can come up with. And also the workflow just got so much quicker and more streamlined when you're having all those tools collected in one place. So that's the new Pyro Subsolver.